メングっていうドーナツパン七人懐かしいなどうしたんだろこれはもう一つのことです。これはもう一つのことです。シャーツコイテイノグハツコロイノレズミセテタラスツマガテナルンジャーニューコイルイニセテチャンクパスンチテニューコイルニクイニクイトゥツマガタイニハイイタテ Ni kauer saya macam mana? Jadi tak pun dia nutri mili kuri. Yang ni mungkin saya cakap hilir semua. Jadi bahasa dalam kita cerita sahaja untuk lihat. Waktu ni hatta aku kagak lagi cuci cincin. Jadi bahasa tak pun dia ini nutri mili kuri. Ini kau cerita ni semua sahaja tu lihat cerita dalam. Tahu sahaja cerita sahaja untuk lihat. Jadi tak pun dia ini nutri mili kuri. Tak pun ni kan amuk sangat dia. Зан амаг басан сүрін гэдэг монгол лтах зайдг гэс хүдлгөөн ээ талахан нэ бэшлээд үүл ээж хаа хүдлэг. Нэдрэн үүл ээж хаа хүдлэг басан даа түүлээн таатай бэн. Ад тэвд анх худ ау лам батар хатар чахаан дуу хаджу бэ зайдг гэс хүдлгөөн ээ олон үлсэн арах хэмжээнд өөрийн бээр хүрлцэн гэрсэн мүн яг одаа цахмар I would like to make warm greetings to all participating here in this hospitality in or in the other While we all so unfortunately, those have our entire, entire international audience here physically with us now, I am at least happy to share that they are Zeitkistkutlgoni tukha Zahidzai hilsang 
нэг л яхад түүхийг хуваалцал тэр та 2021 the event acts as a platform for speakers to give presentations and seminars that are in relation to exploring current problems and possible solutions in the current zeitgeist, or otherwise known as the current climate society, which explains the origins of the name of the event and movement. Үйл ажилхан үйрлхаар оролсаж байгаа, элбэлээ тун отху хэлцэл хэгэж байгаа, эрхмүүд эй та бүхэн танилцуулый. Заунадрый үйл ажилхаан монголдог салбар салбарын зохцуулагч, арим болдийн байм мүн, эдийн сэгж гам болдийн бар зорг, олуусын харилза сүдлаад лүгүү шарвийн бьям ханд, Украин зайдгайст хүдлгүүний зохцуулагч Клифорд Фри. За Клифорд Фри ин Ботоогоор яг улаан болгох төр бичлэн ирж амжиж өгч яг одоо биднээ мөрчлөгдсөн онлайнаар буюу цаг мар энэ үйл ажиллагаанд орлож байгаа дуулахад таатай байна. Танд өнөөдрийн үйл ажиллагаанд нь амжилт хүсье. За мөн антлоглогч гантлагын мөх эрднаар өнөөдөр ихэлхэл тайцуулахаар мөх эрдэнд гантлог хүрэлцэн ирсэн байна. Ингээд бидний үйл ажиллагааг нээж өгнө үү хэмээ. Монгол улсын солин төрлийн ажилтай морин хуурс аюул зооны мөнгөн таныг тайцнаа урьж байна. Now I would like to invite folk musician Mungung Ayurtan to the stage. Sure, sir. Not a moment, his mom, his mother, and his mother, 
He has been involved actively in Zeitgeist movement in Mongolia's activity since the establishment of the movement in 2008. Okay, warm greetings to all. I really warm greetings to all of you because you're attending this very important event. Because who is really interested in Zeitgeist movement is very important. So I would like to answer the question why we support this movement. Why we support this movement to grow as intellectual human beings. We have to learn true knowledge about nature and human about society and as a modern human that has right attitudes and understanding and ready to lead changes to create more healthy, healthier society. So the modern human beings are very related to the Psychic movement. So we join this movement when we learn from the past and experience for today's reality. Okay. So, let's look at common and prevailing characters of present day. We said that the lives of our average person, persons has become busy working days to keep their jobs, to get paid, to have money, to buy necessities, and to sell something to someone. So, for example, so I'd like to hour some profit, to own some property, to achieve goals of some institutions or business. Lives of people are measured by number of work days, amount of money made or spent, amount of time wasted in traffic or social media. And we believe and accept this is the why we should live. To make some profit, to own some property, to achieve goals of some institutions or business. And because we are a lot of times and we need to spend times, well, mm -hmm. 
Yes, the number of work days, the amount of money made or spent, and also spending time in social media. And we believe and accept this is the way we should live. While some people struggle with life's necessities, While some people struggle with life necessities, others are obsessed with competition and measure their life value and success with their materialistic positions. And also they're trying to satisfy it with themselves. They're trying to understand different things. For example, materialistic approaches, positions, the meaning of their life is just a kind of hedonistic spending time with just activities like parties and things. Shopping, materialistic absurdity, and, and this is meaningless. Entertainment has become means to seek relief from distressed society. People don't know what they should know and don't learn what they're supposed to learn. People dying and suffering from nutritional deficiencies, famines, various types of illnesses, heart and Today, 10% of the global population is living in a dire poverty, and over 30% of the population in Mongolia is in poverty. So we have bought symptoms for many years, but we see that problems have not gone away. Outdated knowledge and beliefs about life and society development is why we still have these persisting problems. Yes. This is also because People are not seeing this true source, and not changing it at its roots. And the more reality, we have to understand the problems and issues. So it's the related to this kind of problems. In more specifically, for example, like money, conditions, bank and financial systems, free market economy, all of these, for example, like causes and conditions are just a very big problem for our society. So it's not working in our society. In other words, current system is not market economy, and this system is underlying cause of poverty, crimes, disease, and environmental pollution, which creates inequality and produces endless economic growth. Never in the industrial and production systems is degraded natural habitats, causing climate change, whereas monetary and financial system is allowing concentration of wealth and power to small groups of people. The result causing more disadvantages groups in societies. Education and labor system is not serving for properly developing people intellectually or professionally. Rather, it is making people as tools for production and trade and part of business or some organizations. In short, it is not as great in society rather systems defining and controlling us. So, the other hand, so our education system is not properly working. On the other hand, uh, rather it's just relating to the profits and capitalist approaches, trying to controlling us. Although having differences in races and languages, cultures, and places of living, it is only as humans leading civilization on this earth. Unfortunately, we often see economic, religious, and national divisions and distrust. What is lacking is understanding common and shared values among us. In fact, current global economic model based on expansion of free markets 
зах зээл competitive economic growth өргөжүүлэн дэлх ашиг орлого нэмэгдэл preservation of industrial and trade power damages causes and perpetuates global inequality за өрсөлдөх одоо өрсөлдөөний цаг бол хэрэгцээ байна wars and conflicts human sufferings environmental degradation тэгш бас байдал талцал хаваагдал дайн зөрчилдөн хүмүүсийн зовлон шаналал хацл өнчрөл байгалийн одоо дөрөвдлийн цаад шалтгаан болж байгаа за ядуу буура одоо хөгжиж буй бас оронд олон зун сая хүн it is hard to understand the five government corporations spending billions of dollars on military weapons infrastructures projects тодорхой улс орнууд за транспорт маркетс эдийн засгийн экономи асар том knowing that millions of people living in short of water did put shelter за дээр developing countries асар гэмэн зарцуулж байдаг тэгэхээр энийг нь бол үнэтэй одоо бас эрүүл ухаанаар хүн ойлгож хүлэн зөвшөөрөхөд бол хэцүү бид нар зүгээр л одоо бодит байдал гэж хүлэн зөвшөөрөөд одоо this system is working for some people урсгалаар амьдарч байдаг. За энэ тогтолцоо бол ер нь одоо цөөн хэсэг хүмүүсээ working for most of us. За ихэнх хүмүүс өвдөл ер нь болох болохгүй байгаа. Yes it's not working for all. За энэ тогтолцоо бол зарим улсуудын хувьд бол working for some nations. хөвдсөн баян улсын болон countries like ихэнх улсын countries тэмүүдийн хувьд бол болохгүй байна. Some kind of people in countries. Энэ тогтолцоо but not ялангуяа гарыг дэлхий байгалийн улсын хувьд хурж болохгүй байгаа. This system is sure working for this planet. За бид зөвхөн байгалийн repeating things as it is and repeating at the past today. Одоо хэдэн зон жил we have customized to see and accept the quality and injustice as a norm. I believe it is a sign of lack of proper education that is causing intellectual retardation. So this system is not something people created for the betterment of humanity. Rather it is a өнөөдрийн одоо бид нэг combination of artificial reality хүмүүсийн сайн сарны төлөө бодож болсон сохт биш lasted for hundreds of years харин олон зуун жил үргэлжилж байгаа таалмжгүй бодит бадал бодит байдлыг үргэлжлүүлэл бид нэг энд бол зүгээр дасан тогцоол одоо матрикс гэж тотгол гажуурчих нь хамт бид нар өөрсдөө маш сайн суралцсан хэвчтэй. Бас үнэнээс суралцсны дараа бид нар энэ өөр ямар гарсан гарчиг байж болох талаар бид нар цаг гаргаж зориг тавьж бол бас бодорт тунгаах хэвчтэй. За 4 жилийн 400 жилийн өмнө нар дэлхийг people believe the sun revolved around the earth гэж юмнаас тэгж харддаг тийм ээ. За тэгэхээр өнөөдөр дэлхийн нарын all know earth revolves around the sun and шинж тухайн аргаар бид өөртөө шалгаагүйч гэсэн энэ бол бид нэг их хэрэгтэй болсон. За үүнтэй ер нь бол агаар нэгэн байдлаар we globally need to change our knowledge and understanding of social and economic systems. Тэгэлгээгээ шинжлэлд to further тэгээд гэмт хэрэггүй ядуур society poverty crime зөвчлөнгүй байгалийн бохирдол pollution тэгээд favorable to both зайшгүй шаардлагатай энэ зорилгыг бол таях хэвчтэй. Тэгэхээр энэ urgent very important thing for our humanity. Хөвсөд өөрчлөлт бол бид одоо нүдэн need to participate in this evolution. Тэгэхээр энэ оролцох нэг бол хамгийн гол төлөвлөгөөр бол одоо боловсрол the main important value and the key thing in this the education system. Хөвсгэлаар биш хөвслаар we need to educate ourselves. We need to change the society in this manner. In a way to change our minds. Thank you very much. very much and thank you for your attention. Тэгээ өөрөөс сэдвийн хүнд дэлхийн хэлцэлсэн татмаг тань баярлалаа. Ингээд дараагийн дэлхийн хүчийг тайзна өөрөө. Thank you. Гам болтын бац зэргийг тав бүхэн танилцуулж байна. Бац зэрэг нь манал санхүүгийн нэгдлийн ерхий эдийн засгийн шинжээч голомбангад ахлах эдийн засгийн шинжээчэр тус тус 
Patsarat is an economist and financial expert. He graduated School of Economics at National University of Mongolia and did his master's degree in econometrics at Sakarya University of Turkey. He worked at Has Bank, Government Bank in Mongolia as an analyst, analyst, senior analyst. He now works as general economist at Mandal Financial Group. As a professional, he is interested in studying national and global economics and conducts studies and writes articles. We all thank you very much for this invitation to stay. So the economic structure is very hard right now. A lot of surprises and a lot of things are happening in our society right Because the information is just fluently just changing our minds. The global climate change, so I'm a friend of a friend of mine who is living in Germany, who is living in the same company, a colleague is very stressed about the global climate change, so this is a very big problem for our society too, because of the traffic jam, a lot of problems for us, so we need to understand this difficult problems of how to change our approaches, and so we need to understand and investigate about the free market economy, what is the problem with this kind of system. So are all parts of society and all affected by it. So depending on this system, nature is some of the most wealthy, some average, some live in poverty. You don't understand the problems of the system. That we will be able to take care of our eyes folded. So today, I would like to discuss some of these problems. So I will shortly just try and integrate the problems of our society and emphasize this kind of things. So today, I would like to discuss some of these problems. So today, I would like to discuss some of these problems. So today, I would like to discuss some of these problems. So today, I would like to discuss some of these problems. So today, I would like to discuss some of these problems. Mm -hmm. So we just like driving the car with your eyes folded. So we don't know we don't about the system. system. So we don't know the 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 Яг нэг төрөг одоо өнгөдөд байгаа гоо шалтгаан юунаас олоо гэдгийг бид нэр эргүүлэ харах юм бол өнөөх их төсвийн алдагдал өнөөх их төсгийн өвлгөн ботлох эднээс болж хойрч одоо бий болж байгаа асуудал байна. Гэтэл бид нэр Монгол банкны үүдэнд очих гоо орно. Засгийн газрын үүдэнд очих хэвээр байж. За дээрэс нь дахиад нэг асуудал. Монгол зээлийн хүү одоо өндөр байна гэж ярьдаг тийм бид нэр зээлийн хүү өндөр топ 10 орны нэгд ордд. За тэгээд арилжааны банкуудыг зээлийн хүүгээ буулгаж юм хүлэгчтэй гэж ярьдаг. Эхлэх үндээ зээлийн хүү өндөр байгаа гоо шалтгаан бол бид нэрийн эдийнсгийн хүчлэлийн шинж тэмдэг болохоос биш уг шалтгаан ярьсан биш. А өнөөдөр манад явж байгаа энэ бодлогын тогтворгүй байдлыг өөрөө энэ зээлийн хүү өндөр байхад нөлөөлж байгаа. Энэ хүчлэлээр харах юм бол бид нэр дахиад буруу газар очиод буруу дуу болоог өргөт байгаа гэсэн. Тэгэхээр энэ дээр бид нэр яг юу ганзарч үлдэж байгаа нийтлэг зүйл бид нэр тоглож байгаа эдийнсгийн системийнхаа дүрмийг ойлгохгүй байна. А тэндээс хин хинээс юу юу шаардах хэрэгтэй байгаа гэсэн ойлгохгүй байна. Тийм учраас бид нэрийн өнөөгийн төр төрх бол одоо Биднэрийн биднэрээс болсон одоо үр дүнгийн илрэл юм аа би юу хүртэл гэсэн тоо болсон аа гэдэг юм зүйл нь нэг талаар болоо харж болж байгаа. За өнгөрсөн хугацаанд бол хаант засгийн бол болжлоо гэдэг нь дэлхийн түүхэнд бол 2 3 том социал юмс за хаант засгийн from this time дээрэс нь шашин шашны засгийн үед бол яаж гэсэн вэ? Тэр болгоны эсрэг энэ үед засгийн өөрөө буруу юм шүү гэж хэлсэн үзэл сортол одоо суулц итгэгчд янз бүрийн хүмүүс бол сургаал нам хүртэл ингэ бичиж үзсэн. За тэр сургаал номынх нь хамгийн гол хэлэл бол өнөөгийн одоо либерализм бол үндэс. 
Расизм бол юу гэж холчлоо гэхээр а хөөхөн эрхчлүүлээтэй ойлгомжтой байсан та за энэ нь бол бид нар тод олцсон эрхчлүүлөө юм а гэж цонхгөлж байсан либерализм дотроо бол улс төрийн цаашд эдийнсийн соёлын гэдэг маш хөрөнгө төрний асуудлыг бол хамарч явж байгаа за тэгээд яг уу их хөвчл нийгмийн байгууламж юу гэдэг бол капиталист хандлага та so the main institutions of course are based on capital хооронд нийгмийн гэрээ гэдэг зүйл үүсчихлээ яг уу өнөөдөр бид нэрийн сууж байгаа хүмүүс хоорондоо тохиролцсон аа so one of these people эргээд нийгмийн гэрээ гол хэрэгжүүлж өгч юм зүйл нь бол сонгууль байх so this system of trade preachers freedom preachers ингэж явагддаг гэж хэлдэг. За либерализм нь эдийн засгийн дээр буугаад ирэхээрээ төрийн оролцоол хийсэн. Эдийн засгийн өөр өөр хөгжлөлтэй систем. Төр ямар нэгэн байдлаар байна? Зах зээлийн хөгжлөлтэй байдлаар буулаа гэсэн юм бол үнслэлт тулгуурладаг хэвээр. За гэтэл энэ либерализмыг яг нөгөө талд нь эсэргүүцэж гардаг туйлын өрсгөл нь бол марксизм байна. And the understood different marxism was there is no social contract social contract possible company so the гэсэн оновчтой зөв зүйл. Энэ үгээс марксизм гэсэн гэхээр систем энэ нь бол ийм төрийн оролцоо. Liberals want the contest in those countries. In the 1980s, communism felt the hatta оролцоог шаардсан. Коммунист нийгмийг бол тунхуулж байгаа тийм. За ингээд түүхий явцд бол коммунист нийгмийн За when liberalism was finally tested in 1930s New theory encouraged state intervention. which is called Keynesian economics. Liberalism ялт байгуулсан. А өнөөдөр иргэд харахад бол ихэнх улс орнууд бол бүгд либерализмийг сонгосон. So the all countries are choosing to be liberalism. Example Арай өөр урсгалаар so the neoliberalism after neoliberalism period in 1930 you know liberalism of it is this that it allows state regulation and intervention but it believes that state intervention should not should work to stimulate economy rather than restrict it өөрийгөө тунхуулж исэн хоёр хүнсжил ингээд 1930 оны хямралаар хямралыг тайлбарлаж чадаагүй хямралын эсрэг сонгодог онлоор ямар нэг арга хэмжээ авч чадаагүй. So in this theory requires foundations that supports it. It is like foundation of building. Кейсин одоо кейсин биш нэрлээд байгаа. If you want to defeat certain theory, you should attack its foundation. А ер нь бол алдартай үг нэ урт хугацаанд би төхөн шүү дээ. This is the only way to build the structure or system causing problems. Today we feel that foundations of current system of economics is under pressure and it is foundations have started to weaken and also the economical theories so the neoliberalism is always supporting the state this the, the the minimum state control and interventions and protectionism policy is the main value is the human freedom and the individualism individualist freedom is very important the liberty 
Тэр өнөөдөр бид нэрийн ажиллаж байгаа систем бол ийм бай. Дэлхийн их их хосоонууд чөлөөд эдийн засгийн тал биш ээ. All of the countries are not having a free market economy. Одоо европын орнод бүх So the normally just states and European countries are always related, trying to controlling the state owned policy is more important. So today we feel that foundations of current system of economics is conditions have started to weaken. First thing that is not really working is what is called rational act. So we can see from many sales studies that people don't make rational decisions when buying things. This behavior effect was proved by scientists and they awarded with Nobel's prize for its observations. So the people are just working what is called a rational act. So we can see from many sales studies that people don't make rational decisions when buying things. So this behavioral fact was proved by scientists and they were with Nobel Prize for this observation. So what problems we face today is neoliberalism's application in economy resulted in various issues. So the behavioral economists say that people doesn't make any rational choices because the information a lot of different kind of causes cannot really upon that the people are just always make the right decisions. So it created poli policy instability. The nations are becoming even more national or protectionist rather than becoming globalized. So they are implementing more self-preserving policies. Unequal distribution of wealth has got widespread. So like economic economies of most developed or developing nations have so slowed. And global global climate change become more evident. So today only one percent of global population owns half of global wealth, so this is the inequality equality of the global wealth, but half of all people in the world owns only 1.4% of all wealth. This is a simple fact that how wealth is distributed. So is it somehow stabilized or getting worse? 
дэлхийн их хөвчгөө болоод одоо эдийн засгийн маш хурцтай өсөж байгаа дутаа шилт нь одоо саарал ялангуяа энэ Европ Америк гэдэг их хөвчгөө орнуудын одоо дараагийн өсөлт юу байх вэ гэдэг чинь ирээсэн юм байна. Одоо толгой нь одоо гашсан юм уу та багсан байдал тарцсан. За гурван том хоолын бодлын тогтвөргөө байдлаа. За тэгээд мэдээж хамгийн том бол уур ажил хөдлөж байгаа. Show the global climate change. Also the unemployment. So the economical changes and increments always just making consumptions. So this is getting worse. So we can see the inequality. So you can see these graphs. Only the population of 1% of them, only 1% of them are just almost a half global wealth. The 54 of them are just the half of them are just just only one percent point one point four percent of, of all wealth so, so is it working on this system we are trying to reducing this kind of problems or we just increasing so it is somehow stabilized getting worse. In fact, it is getting more unequal as we see accumulated wealth of rich people. In 2009, wealth of 380 global billionaires revealed equal, equal wealth of 50% of all people in the world. But in 2018, their wealth increased and all other people's wealth only goes to wealth of only 26 billionaires. So additionally, policy uncertainties are becoming more widespread. More than half of nations are suffering from political or economic instabilities. instabilities. These nations are not fighting with arms, but they are fighting economically, and we can see this clearly from these situations existed before COVID-19. So the economical war, of course, is, all, is just emerging in the last 10 years. So the trade wars, like the case of the Chinese and the US trade war. So today's World creates more debt than what has produced or created. So the world created more debt than what is what is. Do we know how this debt is created? After the Second World War, the global economy accelerated for about 30 years. But this slowed since 1980s. What was the reason for this? Because incomes of people and families decreased. Why? Because they could not benefit from that economic growth. So their wages were never increased. So they they trying to promote the credit system. So you have to need a loan if you don't have a lot of money, a lot of incomes. Maybe like the consumption kind of loans, like car car assumptions and all the leasings and things. So the wages were never increased. Therefore, next solution to stimulate market increased demand was to encourage credit loans and mortgages. Families were given opportunities to purchase cars, houses with loans, so the entire economic system moved into the credit and debt system. Today, every government, every business and families have debts. In the last 10 years, we see global debts have increased four times, and nobody knows how to get out of this cycle. So now we see that this system accelerated inequality, debt pressure, policy irregularities, and climate change, and we experience that governments 
damp economy with economy with money to pull it out from downturns and this is putting people and societies between difficult cycles of growth and declines. So, so what happened in Mongolia? We have gone through economic transition, growth, declines and mining booms. During this transition, people and leaders lacked knowledge and experience in this system they were the transition transitioning to. We have seen this unfair privatization seems the world's 30, 30, 300 years of capitalist history was repeated in Mongolia in 30 years after transitioning from 70 years of socialist era. From the 1990s to 1994, where we were having the transition economy, so we don't have knowledge and experience in the system they were just transitioning to. We have seen this unfair privatization schemes, so we have the privatization policy. You have to privatize your state-owned industrial manufacturers and things. So the 30 years capitalist history was repeated in Mongolia 30 years after transitioning from 70 years of socialist era. So Mongolia's economy is heavily dependent on agriculture and for a long time nation relied on foreign aid loans. Then the mining boom came since 2006 and national mining company had paid large government bills and political parties started to spend public monies and to win the elections. Now as a nation Mongolia has no survival plan if we run out of natural resources. So the, then the mining boom came since in 2006, national mining company paid large government bills and political parties started to spend public monies to win the elections. Now as a nation, Mongolia has no survival plan if we run out of natural resources. Okay. 
хэлэх аавлгаар нь яг л бас байна гэж айгүй илүү юм яриад байна. So the too much dependence on mining sector to spoil the economy. So we often hear about economic growth, but don't know much about what is behind this. So it is all about incomes, profits of companies, and less about workers' wages. In so in Mongolia's cases, mining sector is not helping its economy and is not supporting growth. So we have seen political parties don't make conscious or rational decision in the system of liberal and market-based economy. Rather, they openly compete one another, making false promises and making debts to pay their promises. This started in 2006, and Mongolia now in among the group of countries with highest debts. So we put more debt than what we can produce or pay. We are no better situation than those countries such as Venezuela or Greece in terms of debt situation. So we need to invest our educational, educational sector. So, yes. So you can see the graphs, so it's the economical increases of the last 20 years, the Mongolian economy. So our two uh, neighborhood countries like Chinese and Russia. So this is the, the curse of the economical highest natural resource. So our external just uh, the world economy is always causing our uh, local economy, so it's a very big problem for us. So it's an in imbalanced kind of income and economical growth, so it's a very big problem. It's all of the increase in incomes are just from mining sector. Only the mining, mining sectors labor and salaries and payments are just growing, but the other sectors are just uh, decreasing. So this is a big problem. The sustainable income and growth are very important. We just only care about minings, especially the politicians. So we, we not only just care about the economical growth, also the national income across the, the national income product is very important. So we don't know what could happen then. So we will paying much more money than what we pay for education and health sectors. So the economy is not supposed to be something abstract thing, rather it is about people. So it is goals should make difference in people's lives, education, health and living standards and employments. So to see if any improvements we need to look at employment sector like 30 years ago 36% of people were unemployed. But it is now at 28%, in other words, one in three people are living in poverty. 
Is it an improvement because mining economy does not create enough workplaces and it does not directly support other economic sectors? In Mongolia, mining produces 80% of incomes but takes only 5% of employment. So it is a challenge for someone who is living in Mongolia. We need to reforms in education, health social insurance systems. Unless we make some, some meaningful changes, every child in this country will be taken through this Mongolian version of this harsh capitalist system and will be left without future, without meaning in their lives and without happiness. So it is time to think about changes, what, can, what we can change and what we need to change it. Thank you very much. So the value of currency is always changing because we need a, we need a lot of consumptions like iPhone, like the cruise cars, and also the uh, kinds of very basic kinds of uh, consumptions. So we need to make and more collect collect more the value of current in international currencies like dollars and euros. But uh, we we just always selling and just trading our own natural resources. So we need to buy we need to buy them. So we need a lot of value collections. So it's a very big problem. So we just depending from the import right? The, the, in the, we're not we're not producing our own things. So we just just. Uh, dependent from the outside, uh, value, values and all of the things. So the so the the depth so we put more depth that than we could we can produce our pay so we're not we are no better situation than those countries such as Venezuela or Greece in terms of depth situation. So the government has delayed payment of much of its debts until 2025. We don't know what could happen then. We will pay pay much more money than what we pay for education and health sectors.
So we have a debt problem, so it's a very big problem in our society and our country. So the mining sector is just always unbalancing our economy. So behind the economy is, of course, always people and human beings. So the three people, the 3.5 people are always poverty, have authority. So our importing poverty is not decreased, decreased, so it's always increasing. So this is the inequality problem in our society. The second one is, of course, unemployment. Un unemployment rate is always increasing. It doesn't just uh, decrease the last 10 years. So this is our domain big problem. So issues. The third one is three million people. Only the two two million are just working. So the mining sector is always using a lot of capitals like the devices and equipments. So the people are just working there. So the other sectors like agriculture and the uh, industrial kind of sectors are no kinds of increase. So this is a very big problem for our society and our education and our economical sector. Only we care about mining, mining, mining. Of course, it's very important, but on the other hand, we need to we need to uh, take taxes from mining sector and we need to invest the other sectors like education and the industrial manufacturers. And so we need to understand that we need to force our uh, labor powers to using these kind of things. So the first to be born, the health insurance. So the, so the maternity, or the, 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 the people who are just women are just staying in the maternity hospital bed. And also it causes the air pollution. So it's a very big problem. So it's a kind of framework we can see. And the little kid is just grow and grow. And then the education sector. So we can see like the public schools are having a lot of students are studying together, like 50 or 60 kind of students are in one classroom. So it's just a very heavy, you know. Ирүүсэн 
So it is a challenge for someone who is living in Mongolia. So we need to reform in education, health, social insurance systems. Unless we make some meaningful changes, every child in this country will be taken through this Mongolian version of this harsh capitalist system and will be left without future, without meaning in their lives and without happiness. So it is time to think about changes, what we can change and what we need to change. Thank you for Mr. Batsarek. I would now I would like to um, welcome folk musician Atonji McNamsre.
Environmental protection, internet freedom and privacy, plus one of the co-founders of Zeitgeist movement in Germany. He has also become recently one of the official coordinators for Koto Co-op in Finland. He has a background in computer science, graphic art, and linguistics. His involvement in the movement first began in Berlin during his studies when he when the movement was first founded. He, along with the T other TCM activists, created a lot of framework projects and events that have been co-created in an open source format throughout the rest of the movement. He has been globally active in the movement, well as locally involved with TCM Germany, Australia, Switzerland, Sweden, Ukraine, and Iceland. Other involvements of his have been in sustainable and ecological development of architecture, cultural art performances, as well as emission-free ecological cargo sailing. Due to COVID-related travel restrictions, he couldn't travel to Mongolia, but he has sent us his virtual presentation. Good luck to Mr. Clifford Fry.
Soon Clifford Fry, speaker, will present his presentation. Now, I would like to welcome Munkhirtan Gandolta. Munkhirtan is a social cultural anthropologist. He graduated National University of Mongolia in 2008 and acquired master's degree in social cultural anthropology at National University of Mongolia in 2010 and master's degree in development study at the University of Melbourne, Australia in 2020. He taught at National University, National Science and Technology University for over 10 years. He now works with the facility of anthropology. Hello, my name is Mokhazman Tantasuk. I'm a senior lecturer at Anthropology at National University of Mongolia. Today I'm going to talk about shared values of different culture and nations and anthropological perspective. Also talk a little bit about cultural differences and different nations. In this general, this presentation covers a range of topics, including cultural, historical, and religious differences of nations, how these dissimilar values can coexist in the world, and anthropological contributions from this existence for many years since it's emergence. <laughs> So what is anthropology? So you already listen about anthropology. But people are just understanding about the biological and physical anthropology. For example, like studying blood pressures or maybe like kind of illness or maybe like disease, studying disease. For example, like archaeological excavations, in a case they're just trying to study the bones and fossils and things. People's understanding is just kind of this kind of very strict kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. But also, they are on a cultural and social anthropology. So anthropology is studying a culture, not singular form, form of it, but both plural from these cultures. Because there are many cultures, not one as Western or American or Mongolian. So, so, so anthropology is the both the most scientific of humanities. So, so the American anthropologist father Franz Boas uses always this term as plural form to express his very rich sense. Anthropology is the discipline which promotes the idea of understanding of cultural differences and respecting their diverse beliefs around the world for over 200 years. So more precisely, based on a very specific research method as participant observation, anthropologists study people and their culture from Philippines coal mines which in several hundred meters under the sea level to endance mountains about 4,000 meters high. So anthropology is the both 
the most scientific of the humanities, and the most humanistic of the sciences. So this is the quotation about Eric Wolf in 1964. So also this discipline believes that human beings are the most adaptable animals in the world, Eric's in 2015. So as well as their culture, diverse things. So due to this diversity, earliest anthropologists used the word culture in a plural form as cultures to express this uniqueness as before mentioned. The reason why one culture is different from others is related to the character called particularism. That shaped by a special environment, ecology, even history and social constructions or engineering. So, so culture is shared. During anthropology is to study culture. Culture is complex, all which includes knowledge, beliefs, arts, morals, law, custom and other capabilities and habits acquired by men as a member of society. In this sense, culture includes every aspect of our society. There are many ways to learn culture as observing, listening, talking, interacting with others. There are many ways to learn culture such as observing, Listening, talking, interacting with others like this, there are many shared values such as belief, memories, expectations, as well as a way of thinking. Learning culture or inculturation is different people by providing common experiences, of course. So it is true that culture is in constant change. Today's norm probably was not possible in the past, but through the transmission we accept this custom these days, which is intolerable. So there are many anthropological research methods such as culture, cross-cultural perspective and participant observation for study of cultural differences. So the main method is, of course, participant observation. So mainly anthropologists are using participant observation method, but of course uh, other social scientific disciplines like sociologists and gender studies and political scientists are always also using participant observation. So the anthropology is not only just only the uh, participant observation method, it's also more plural for different kind of disciplines. So what is participant observation? Because participant observation is a very important method which is trying to spend time with their cultural kind of groups and communities because if you understand that kind of community is people, indigenous people, you have to spend time, for example, like at least like six months or maybe like seven months or eight months to live with, live with them, to try to learn their languages and their cultural customs and trying to 
participate in their events and uh, kind of ceremonies and things. So that's why you need to understand the internal seeing and internal way to understand the shape, culture and patterns. So difference of humanity and nations is related to biology and culture. So there are certain biological similarities of human beings as well as differences. It does not mean that humanity are different species at all, but there are some factors that influence to the difference and similarities. Other important factors of environmental factors include climate and disease. Climate has effects on determining what kinds of human variation are more adaptable to survive without much restrictions and hardships. For example, people who live in a climate where there is a lot of exposure to sunlight have a darker color of skin tone. Like this, there are cultural similarities and differences of nations, mainly impacted by social and cultural context, not like gene or biological factors. You start learning from the people around you right from the birth and the cultural environment that shapes your actions. So give them enough time to develop and those actions become habit habits. They are exaggerate and great inside and um, almost of a subconscious nature. And what such example is the difference in the science of respect in different cultures? So, culture is not isolated, but it is an interaction of another one or others. Also, not only university graduates, but all people in the world are cultured. So, there is no unworthy or unnatural things for human life. Culture is learned in different methods. It means any children have ability to learn their culture in direct and indirect ways. Anthropology opposes So the difference of humanity and nations is related to biology and culture. So there are certain biological similarities of human beings as well as differences. It does not mean that humanity are different species at all, but there are some factors that influence the difference and similarities. Other important factors of environmental factors include climate and disease. Climate has effects on determining what kinds of human duration or more adaptable to survive without much restrictions and hardships. So we need to understand and we need to learn culture. How to learn large cultures is very important. So we need to observe and listen to and talk and interact with others. So culture is not isolated, but it is an interaction with another one others. Also not only university graduates, but all people in the world culture. So there is no one who is the so uh, uncultured things for human life, cultures learn in different methods that means any children have ability to learn their culture in direct and indirect ways. Anthropology opposes Indocentism but encourages cultural diversity and particularity. We share many universal traits such as social organizations, food sharing, exogamy and endogamy, as well as insist, 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 taboo, etc. Despite these factors, there are certain cultural particularity traits which are opposition, oppositions of universal. For example, for money, for money, many cultures express different views. Between these two perspectives, there are a middle ground called cultural general, general, generalities which focus on shared values in two or more different cultures, such as family type and English-speaking countries, societies. So the 
за тэгэхээр энэ дэр нэг бас ахиад нөгөө төрөний уу гэх гэдэг сурлаачаас би ингээд ихтэй татсан байна. Айлч хүн төрлөртний айлч соёл дангаараа оршиж байгаа уу? Оршихгүй боломж байхгүй. Заавал бусад соёлд байгаа харилцан үйлчлэл орчихсон. Тэг? Заавал орчихсон. Ингэжээ тэр соёл бүтэж бүрдэнэ. Тэрнээс дангаараа байгаад, дустаан байгаад ингээ бүрдээ би болсон соёл гэж юусэн байна. За яг үнтэй адилхан антрологи бол би үүнд үстэй өглөө соёлтой соёлгүй эргэлсэн эргэншээг үстэй ойлгох юм шиг байхгүй юм уу? сэ соёлчлал хэвчээ байна. Тэр нэг нь би магадгүй паалантай ноод бийлсэж байна. Тэр учраас би соёлтой өчи модон юм уу? За чи ч түү соёлгүүдээ хижил хэсэг үзүүлж болохоос биш. Өөрөөр хэмэл яаж вэ? Тэр хүн өөрийнхөө соёлын шалгуураар бусад соёлыг харчиж чадах хэрэгтэй. Тэ? Заавал тэгээд байгаа хэрэг үү тийм үү? За иймэрхүү зөндөө олон зүйл байдаг учраас антологи бол одоо үзлээр бол хүн болгох хэрэгтэй. Харин ч эсрэг юмээр магадгүй хин нэг нь дэлхийн даатартай төгөлдөр хуурч тий одоо хийлж болвол антологи үед сонирхолтой үзэл биш яагаад бол тийм хүмүүс зөндөө байгаа юм харин энэ сонирхолтой өөрчлөлт номхон талаа нэг арлын мэдэх одоо бүрийн чинь тийм нүүгч нэр нэг хөгжмийн үлгээгээр байж байгаа тэр нь одоогийн урлагийн хөгжмийн онлын ойлголтоор ямар сонин дуугаар тийм бэ гэж бодогдохоор хөгжим биш гэж үзэх гэхээр тэр нь хөх илүү үсэн яагаад бол тэр хүний So as we mentioned above biologically human beings are same but culturally distinctive the main aspects of culture such as language religion history and rituals are mostly socially constructed and invented in this way there are certain things such as biological psychological social and cultural features are universal which are shared by all humans in the universe in other words if you see not familiar things or events that means These things are different from what your culture expresses, not alien or hateful. It is different, that means just different, not awkward. So anthropology works against such kind of discriminations like racial and cultural, political and sexual. Every part of this discrimination is social creations and not as strong empirical data evidence. If people see cultural differences in this way, they can understand basic values of human society and start to live in more equal, and same life especially in the modern society that is influenced by strong and external powers such as mass media migration and social media human life releases its fundamental character as sameness so anthropology is opposes intrusivism but encourages cultural universality and particularity so the ethnocentrism cultural universality cultural relativism particularity generality is very important so because we share many universal traits such as social relations sharing exogamy and endogamy as well as this is this taboo so despite these facts there are certain cultural particularity traits which are oppositions of universality for example for many for many many cultures ex- express different views between these two perspectives there are male crime called cultural general- generalities which focuses on shared values in two or more different cultures such as family type in English speaking societies. За general activity гэдэг нь бол татсан гоос нөгөөс. За эндээс ингээд энэ олон баахан та 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 гэсэн юм ингээд би юу хэлэхэж байгаа вэ? Өөр гэдэг бол зүгээр өөр л гэсэн үг. Тэ? Different is just different. So it's not your that kind of people are smart, smarter than you or maybe like more intellectual. Than you. So anthropology is more of a different principle. So as I mentioned, the other thing, human beings are not seen culturally distinct. So the main aspect of the culture, such as language, religion, history, and rituals, are more socially constructed and invented. In this way, there are certain things, such as biological, psychological, social, and cultural features, are universal, which are shared by all humans in the universe. In other words, if you see not familiar things or events that these things are different from what your culture expresses, not alien or hateful. It is different, that means just different or not awkward. So anthropology works against such kind of discriminations like racial, cultural, political and sexual. So every part of these discrimination is social creations and not has strong empirical data evidence. If people see cultural differences in this way, they can understand basic values of human society and to start living more equal and same life. Especially in modern society that is influenced by strong external powers such as mass media, migration and social media, human life lists its fundamental character as sameness. Макс, ими тут, так он тут сухо сидит.
Exactly. Thank you for more question. Okay, now I introduce Clever Fry again. Clever Fry is an activist of human rights, environmental protection, internet freedom and privacy, plus one of the co-founders of the Zeitgeist movement in Germany. He has also become recently one of the official coordinators of Kotoko OP in Finland and he has back background computer science, graphic art and linguistics. His involvement in the movement first began in Berlin during his studies when the movement was first founded.
put in practice, which can allow sustainable livelihood for people that want to take part in Kodor. Taking part in the Kodor community means uh, having access to units within Kodor, which are properties owned by the co-op and are living spaces for the members. The word koto itself actually comes from proto Finnish and is an archaic word for home. Seems quite fitting for the cause, yeah. Paul scarcely describes the theoretical form of economy or society in which things such as goods and services and information are free or practically free. This would be due to an abundance of fundamental resources such as matter, energy, and intelligence in conjunction with sophisticated automation, automated systems capable of converting raw materials into finished goods, allowing manufacturing to be as easy as duplicating software. Copy paste. Even without postulating new technologies, uh, it is conceivable that already there exists enough energy, raw materials, and biological resources to provide a harmonious lifestyle for every person on Earth. Post scarcity does not mean that all scarcity has been eliminated for all goods and services, but that all people can easily have a their basic survival needs met along some significant proportion of their desires for goods and services. So while Koto's main initiative is to enable its own its own unit, hence the Koto economy, if you will, uh, to the level of a post-scarcity economy, it is also the goal to inspire the rest of the world to choose this direction for of society. Instead of competition, Koto is more interested in collaboration. And that is part of the key in post-scarcity. Within Koto, we have made progress by further developing our initiatives while creating more models, expanding structures, and having meetings. Yeah, lots of meetings. It does not seem too exciting, especially virtually all the meetings we have had in Koto Co-op during the past year were all online due to the ongoing pandemic since of last year 2020. But in reality, all of these meetings were all quiet, important, and insightful. They were essential as well as to help all of us further get a better glimpse of the milestones and goals that we want to achieve in Koto. Not having any kind of orientation and plan is always disastrous when trying to accomplish something like
Presentations were about the Zeitgeist movement. Is there any projects and organizations of Kota Op in Mongolia? Yeah, we have some activities, something like that. Uh, let's live in countryside. It's, it's not like the systematically organized, but it's uh, uh, independent from outer some circum uh, social circumstance. Mostly, uh, the teachers. Mm -hmm. 
Culture program will be uh, commencing in five years in Mongolia. Then the main main goal is uh, to providing basic basic basic. I've been involved in this movement since 2007 or 8. Uh, it's not the money based, it's uh, some resource based system. We, uh, I have been doing uh, some research on this topic. I'm working on some financial stuff. For me, I'm all, all The, some political involvement in this in this area is there is short time for us and then this encouraging to do more and more stuff to do and everything is based on the money so Is there any regular projects and seminars, maybe twice a week or once a week? We should meet and find the solutions. Is there any regular projects or meetings? Mm -hmm. 
As I studied, we need more financial support than we are having some troubles. Bad financial support. For short term, it's uh, for short term flying. It's, uh, it's not really easy. Main goal is re required, but uh, we need to our main goal to divide the sub objectives down. Especially for we need some more volunteer people and then encouraging a lot of people to uh, involve in our project. There are a lot of volunteer works, such as uh, cleaning streets voluntarily and some other really. Can you describe the main goal of this project? I've been thinking, you know the matrix? Matrix movie? It's uh, still, I think, science fiction, but but Matrix uh, yeah, innovates the new question in our daily life. Then. I uh, I heard that its producers were very philosophic. Uh, producers were producers majors were very philosophy based. I think it's like you know it's like matrix. Every, Every hour, personal data or information is all the program in social activity. For example, Mongolians use 35 consonants, but but we actually use uh, 25 or 7 consonants. 
So we need to discover ourselves. Mm. This movement objective is uh, we should uh, break out in this system, from the system, mm. especially from our educational track. It's not uh, our society, it's not people's, people... So that our main goal is to educate people equally. And we should compose an alternative educational system. Maybe and then 12 or 14 years later, people will be educated equally. The system we're living in is introduced us like being okay. It's all well. In real life, it's not being okay. And the zeitgeist movement is aiming to change this wrong system. We should ask questions like where we at and where we are aiming to, going to. Are we going on the right path? Are we satisfied in mentally and educationally, not only materialistic type? My three main statements is we should see and think about the systems not being in systems 
And we may find the solutions. From the current studies, only one person of people are using the most of our What's the point of the neoliberalism on a new side? I suggest that a uh, person who named Balorma, and you should invite her. How about cooperating? We, we know that person, then there is uh, some conflict on some problems. His, his point of aspect is uh, based on conspiracy theory. Uh, his opinion is based on the conspiracy theory. So our, our opinion is based on the um, more like the educated point of view. So there is uh, there are some conflict problems between us, but but we understand there here his opinion of change system. We are, we agree that, but but we are aware from the. Conspiracy theory. Thank you, presenters and those who participated in question and answer session.
Now I would like to present Bimba Hand Lokoshara. Bimba Hand is an international relations expert. She graduated National University of Mongolia in 2007 and acquired a master's degree in international relations and European studies in Budapest in 2011, Hungary. Worked for the Institute of Strategic Studies in Mongolia for 10 years and currently serving as researcher in Academy of Sciences in Mongolia. Yet, <laughs> Yachangoya, <coughs> Хүртэг <coughs> A substantial part of the global GDP is spent on military. To be uh, accurate, in 2020, total global military expenditure rose to almost uh, 2 trillion last year, an increase of 2.6 percent in real terms of from 2019. According to data published by the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, uh, the five biggest spenders in 2020, which together accounted for 62% of uh, global military, military expenditure, were the United States, China, India, uh, Russia, and the United Kingdom. Uh, military spending by China grew for the 26th conse consecutive year. Overall, in the last decade, China has increased its military spending by 76%. On the other hand, countries, especially developed uh, countries, are uh, slow to increase their spending on foreign aid. In 1967, it was first agreed to raise Official development assistance to 0.7% of don donors' national income. In 2005, the 15 countries that were members of the European Union by 20 2004 agreed to reach the target by 2015. The 0.7% 7, 7 target served as a reference for. Uh, 2005 political commitments to increase ODA from the European Union, the G8 uh, planning summit, and the UN World Summit. Yet, a very a few countries have reached the 0.7% target. In fact, since 1960, only 14 countries, including Luxembourg, Denmark, Norway, Netherlands, Sweden, Germany, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates, and the UK, Finland, Kuwait, Liechtenstein, France, and Belgium have ever reached this target. 
handful of countries consistently spent at or above the target. For example, Luxembourg first met the target in 2000 and has since been one of the most generous donors in proportional terms. Denmark, Norway, the Netherlands and Sweden started meeting the target in the 1970s and have continued to meet it in almost every year. The Netherlands appears to have stopped recently. However, it has not met the target since 2015. On the other hand, in many countries, including the US, the world's largest military spender, aid spending stays at around the 0.1 to 0.2 percent level. Due to the pandemic, those countries which previously met the target are not able to fulfill its promise. For, for example, in November 2020, the UK government said that it was uh, one of several countries that were replacing their aid spending due to pandemic. The data by UNCTAD in 2016 says that if rich countries had consistently spent, met the 0.7% uh, target since 2010-2002, then developing countries would have been two trillion better off. In other words, instead of spending two trillion on military, more money would be sent on sustainable development, improving the lives of millions of people around the world. In these days, we have seen heard a lot of migrants at the Belarus and Poland border. Unfortunately, this is the just one of examples what international migrants have experienced. Several thousands of migrants who, have, who are being stranded along the border between Poland and Belarus are mostly from Iraq, suffering from an armed conflict that began with the 2003 invasion of Iraq by a United States-led coalition that toppled the government of Saddam Hussein. In fact, the most uh, common factor for forced migration around the world is conflict. With the U.S. ill-fated intervention, a serious de deadly civil war has, has caused over 11 million instances of forced migration. To date, nearly 6.2 million Syrians are internally displaced and 5.6 million Syrians are counted as refugees. The refugees. The Democratic Republic of Congo has the highest number of displaced people on the continent of Africa, with nearly 6 million people forced from their homes by various conflicts. South Sudan has been continuously plagued by war-induced migration during its short existence. In the past two years, globalization was already not strong uh, as in previous years before the outbreak of the pandemic. The global pandemic led us to realize that the world was too dependent on China's central global supply chain. The coronavirus has had the great negative impact on the value chain between regions, while it has had the least negative impact on the value chain within the region. In other words, the coronavirus crisis is not ending economic globalization, but rather to intensify the region, regionalization of process, as uh, it could mark a tipping point that prompts many business to remodel their supply chain and invest in more resilient and often more local pa patterns of production. One option is shortening supply chain with U.S. companies moving production to Mexico and European, European ones to Eastern Europe or Turkey. Moreover, amid the, the COVID-19 pandemic, countries have rushed to conclude various regional agreements to facilitating trade and investment, cooperation to support post-pandemic recovery. One of the most examples is the Regional Cooperative Economic Partnership, which was signed by 10 members of ASEAN plus China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand in November 2020 and will come into force in January 2022. Uh, this is now the largest trading block globally, covering a market of 2.2 billion people and uh, 26 
two trillion of global in output and accounting for about 30 percent of the population worldwide as well as the global economy Mongolia is a country with a small population located in both Central and North East Asia. Unfortunately, these two regions are free from various security threats, although North East Asia is considered as one of the world's most economically vibrant regions. Economic and development opportunities are shadowed by existing challenges that the region is facing. To tackle uh, aforementioned traditional and non-traditional security threats, regional cooperation clearly needed in Northeast Asia. But like other nations, Mongolia is interested in more economic cooperation in the region. However, the region is considered as one of the few regions that are under institutionalized. Many initiatives to create regional integration in the security community are mainly hampered by historical Animosities and mutual distrust. On the other hand, Central Asia has been greatly step destabilized with the U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan and Taliban's takeover of the country. Now, this country is facing the worst humanitarian disaster the UN has ever seen. In Afghanistan, 23 million people are in desperate need of food. The 20 billion economy could shrink by 4 billion or more. And 97% uh, of the 38 million population are at risk of sinking into poverty. The dire situation in the country would force more Af Afghans to turn to terrorism, trafficking, and drug smuggling. Uh, Afghanistan is the world's largest producer of opium, according to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. Its open harvest accounts for more than 80% of the world's supply. In 2018, the UNODC estimated opium production contributed to 11% of the country's economy. Heroin made from opium grown in Afghanistan makes up 95% of the market in Europe. Some portions of heroin from Afghanistan are trafficked to Russia through Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan to Kazakhstan, the northern route of Golden Crescent of South Asia. As Mongolia borders with Russia, uh, which has one of the world's biggest heroin problems, with up to 3 million addicts, increasing heroin supply from Afghanistan would also cause a serious problem to the country of 3.3 million. Бид 
гэсэн энэ улс одоо гаа тэрэнд амьдарч байгаа монголчууд аюулгүй байдал яаж нөлөөлөх вэ гэдэг ийм асуудал бол бас бид нарт тулгарсан ийм байдалтай байна. За. За түрүү ярьсан 100 хойд аз аюулгүй байдлын интеграцид бий болохгүй ч юм уу эдийн засгийн интеграцид өрөнгөгүй байгаад хамгийн гол нь бүс нутгуудыг их гүрнүүдийн хуваагдал их гүрнүүд ийм 100 хойд азыг үндсэнд нь хуваасан Умар цалангасыг араас нь дэмжиж ирсэн болсон нь бол нийтэд зөвлөлт холбоот бас хятадууд улс тий. Нөгөө төлд өмнө цалангасыг дэмжиж Японыг дэмжиж цэн цэргээр тайлбарлаж байгаа болсон. Америкийн нэгдсэн улс байгаа. Америкийн одоо нийт цэрэг бол 89 байгууламжийн дээр бол ингээд цэргийнхаа үйл ажиллагааг явуулаад энэ зүүн хойд хаад за тэр дундаа Аз нэг хүн талан бүсд тий бол ерхийд нь хянсан байдалтай байна. In the future international relations might be characterized by bipolar as many predict ซาฮันซาทูเลเรตซูนตัวตัดแต่ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ
The word, word smart in smart countries has come to mean, mean powerless, weak, insignificant, and irrelevant. However, liberal institutionalism and social constructivism, which emerged after realism in international relations, provided analytical opportunities for the study of small states in international politics. For example, uh, liberal institutionalism emphasizes the role of uh, regional and international organizations in interdependent international relations. In this sense, such organizations have opened up new opportunities for players who do not play a dominant role in international relations to advance their interests. With the proliferation of international organizations, the realistic assumption that being small, being small equals to being weak has become questionable. That so to take some examples, uh, Sri Lanka's people uh, thought that the investment coming to Qatar uh, part would be the future of the country, but uh, in fact it, it uh, proved to be that the part was used to in a more uh, in favor of uh, for the purpose of uh, big nations. In the corridors also being uh, developed in Pakistan, uh, same uh, examples. <laughs> In the, taking China's example, the China's uh, standing military counts as the number of uh, uh, troops, soldiers in China is the same size as Mongolia's, Mongolia's population. So, uh, Mongolia is very in unique situation as it's, as it's, it's sandwiched between the two uh, great uh, powers, and there's no such nation that's in, in, in such situation. So, uh, during the history, we've seen that the, the power shift, shift theory that uh, in the China is uh, taking uh, the same path in terms of uh, trying to be influential in the global uh, geopolitics. So it's, it's not it's China, China's uh, intention is not it's not actually intentional, but it's the system that requires China to uh, behave like this. So the current uh, theories and assumptions are this, uh, this conflict in the uh, power struggle in Northeast Asia is inevitable. So US, uh, recent US uh, strategy is to use India in the in Indian Ocean to, to uh, 
so during the Soviet era, uh, Mongolia was Another interesting point is that uh, we saw that many uh, Western nations opened their embassies uh, in Mongolia to experience or to observe the situation there. The Mongols are simple. 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 Which is kind of bad as so, in an example of this uh, hedging strategy is a third neighbor policy for Mongolia. So one of the well-known politicians in Mongolia said that we Mongolians uh, should uh, pray for the relationship between the, uh, China and the United States stay calm and friendly, uh, otherwise it should be a disaster for a difficult situation for Mongolia such a, for such a small country. So one of the uh, sectors that's not really working uh, in terms of uh, third uh, neighbor policy is the trade. So always the trade balance is in favor for the United States, for example. Uh, if we look at the Mongolia and the United States trade, in terms of uh, investment. So in recent years, uh, United States uh, investment to Mongolia have decreased. So, of course, this is one reason is due to uh, unstable uh, policy uh, environment in Mongolia. So, 
асуудалтай ус гэдгийг бид нэр болов мөг бүгд мэдж байгаа за хамгийн их яригдж байгаа зүйл бол энэ политикал патронаж клиентизм гэдэг зүйл бол манад тэгээд бүх альба ажил бол л тэ тал тал одоо тэр хүрээгээрээ явагддаг ус төрийн намын томилгоо бол маш хүчтэй ийм усад бол бас so due to this the system we have in in Mongolia we have Mongolia's government and the people are suffering from a very bad form of capitalism and that's in fact the country's countries Хүлэлгөөний <laughs> Zaid gets with Gunny around the Rutagin, Unsung with the Chan, Ukraine had taken you to Ukraine or Sinki or the Chan to have a snake or had Tata Bena, get up the Rajil, killed the Sustrian. That happened the Varsa. So as we come to concluding the event, we can uh, do so by saying despite the challenges through a pandemic, we did it. Uh, we can uh, give a round of applause to ourselves and the speakers, to our live audience in Lombatar in the whole world watching through the live stream. With that, we want to express lots of gratitude um, for making the 13th annual the Global Z Day here in Lombatar, Mongolia. Um, possible. Uh, huge thanks. Huge thanks to this Mongolia branch that has uh, organized annual uh, Zeta events for now 13 years, making this one their global one. We would also like to thank TZM Ukraine for all the technical help that they were able to assist us with a long distance away from us. And to all of those uh, from abroad that couldn't make it uh, to Mongolia attend this event, we would like to let you all know that uh, we have these events every year in, here in Mongolia and that we welcome you to come and visit us here even whenever you get a chance. Uh, we would be glad to meet you. Also, we look forward to seeing other Asian countries host, hosting Global Zeta events in the future and we encourage everyone to try and attend those two. For anybody wanting to review or reflect on this year's Z Day, talk about other matters in the Zykes movement, as well as talk about the subjects that were uh, presented by our speakers today, we can uh, we welcome you to join our TZM Discord server tomorrow at uh, 12 UTS time for an open assembly meeting. Information on how to ac access the Discord server can be found at the zeitgeistmovement.com. So we would like to conclude the 13th annual Global Zeitgeist Day by wishing everyone all the best. Don't ever stop doing your part to make the world a better place. Stay healthy and uh, we will see you all next year in Kiev, Ukraine for the 14th annual Global Zeitgeist Day 2020.
2022. Thank you. CZM is a sustainability advocacy group that operates through a network of regional chapters, project teams, public events, media expressions, and charity operations. CZM's activism is explicitly based on nonviolent methods of communication with the core focus on educating the public about the true root sources of many common personal, social, and ecological problems today, coupled with the vast problem-solving and humanity-improving potential science and technology has now enabled but yet goes unapplied due to barriers inherent in the current established social system. As a movement for human sustainability, TZM is not a political party. TZM does realize the current system is unsustainable and must be supplanted in order for humanity to survive. People of all or no faiths, any national or ethnic heritage, and any other personal, social, or biological characteristics are welcome to contribute to the movement. This movement is non-hierarchical and rejects any proposed solutions employing the use of control, violence, or coercion in order to obtain peace and harmony. The Zeitgeist Movement is currently active worldwide in over 100 countries and has held hundreds of significant local, national, and international events during its first 10 years. What is the Zeitgeist Movement? Founded in 2008, the Zeitgeist Movement, TZM, is a sustainability advocacy group that operates through a network of regional chapters, project teams, public events, media expressions, and charity operations.